Today in this video, we're gonna cover the basics of shortcuts in vMix. Shortcuts are a great way to perform functions within vMix with just a keystroke or the press of a button. From our vMix production, we'll need to open up the shortcuts section. Now this can be found in the settings section and then shortcuts. Now typically this screen will be filled with all of the shortcuts that you've already set up within vMix. However, because we haven't set any up, there aren't any there yet. So now I'm gonna show you how to set up an individual shortcut. We do have templates for shortcuts, but I'll show you those a bit later on. So what you wanna do is click the add button. Now up the top, you wanna to select the key in which you want the shortcut to perform. So we'll press the B button. So when we hit the B button, then it will perform this shortcut function. So we'll select a function. And as you can see here, we have all the possible functions available for vMix shortcuts. And these are broken up into subsections on the left. So we have transition, title, input, overlay, etc. So for example, we're just gonna select transition. We're gonna go fade. We can change the duration. And then what we wanna do is select the video we're going to um, perform the fade transition. So we'll go with the vMix Go video here. All right, so this assigns shortcut to input number section. Now what that is, is by ticking this button, you'll assign the shortcut to the individual input number. So down here in our vMix production, you can see we've got vMix Proto, Promo is input one, and then we've got that one as input two. Now, typically you would want the shortcut to follow your video no matter where you go. So we're gonna leave that unticked However, if you want to hard code the shortcut to the number of your input, then make sure you tick this button. Um, this is handy for people that might be using a MIDI device like a control surface, so you always know what's number one and always know what's number two. Okay, so we can now title this, so we'll call this Go Fade. We can add a description here if we like. Now, the local shortcut tick box this preset only means that we would be saving this shortcut to the to our vMix preset up here, as opposed to setting it to the global vMix settings. So we're gonna leave that unticked because we want it saved as a global vMix setting. And then finally, show in web controller. Now this means that we want the shortcut to appear in the vMix web controller. So we want that ticked. So we'll click okay down the bottom. Now you can see we've got our go fade shortcut. Function is fade duration and what input it's using, which is that video. So we'll click OK now, then we'll click the B button. And there we go. Performed a fade to our vMix Go um, video. All right, so let's go back to our shortcut section. All right, to edit a shortcut, double click on it, and then you can make any changes you like to the shortcut. Then you can also select it and click edit is another way to edit one. If you wanna quickly duplicate or clone an input, uh, sorry, a shortcut, then you just select it and then click clone. Now, as you can see, that has gone red. Now, what does the red mean? Well, if a shortcut is red, it means that it's using the same button to do multiple things. So as you can see, we both got the B button using um, doing the fade. So what we can do is we can click edit here and we can essentially have two different functions for the one key. So we'll keep that as the B key and then we'll select a completely different function. So go with an overlay and then we'll overlay our banana. Cause banana, you don't have to change the title here or anything, but we're just gonna do this for an example. And now you can see we have the banana named, we have go fade, um, both selected for the B key. So we'll click OK now. And let's see what happens when we hit the B key. So we've got a fade to the vMix Go video and it's overlaid our banana. So that's a way to have multiple functions just on the one shortcut key. So let's just turn this off and we'll go back into the shortcut settings. So you can remove these by clicking it and then removing the shortcut like so. All right, so that's how you set up an individual shortcut using the keyboard. Now I'm gonna show you how to use a MIDI device. 
Now what you want to do is make sure that your MIDI device is already set up. So we want to click MIDI settings and make sure that it's selected in this list here. Um, if you don't see your MIDI device here, you'll need to make sure that it's connected and restart vMix. So we'll click OK. All right, so this is how you add an individual button shortcut to your MIDI device. We also have templates, but I'll show you how to use those later on as well. Okay, so click the add button like we did before. Now, instead of selecting it from the drop down menu, we can hit the find button. Now, you can use this find button for your keyboard as well instead of using the drop down. So we'll click the find button. Now, it asks for you to press a button on your keyboard or controller. So, what I'm going to do is select the top left button in the MIDI de device. And as you can see, the velocity is 127, which means it's pushed down. If I lift my finger up, it means that it's zero. So, I'd prefer for the shortcut to take place when it's down. So I'm gonna select that velocity. All right, so now we need to select a function. Just for an example, again, we're gonna use a transition and we will select the, um, let's go with this video here and select title again, um, we'll just call this vMix and we'll click OK. And then OK. All right, so now I'm gonna press the button in my MIDI device and it's performed a wipe. So that's how you set up individual keys for your MIDI device to perform shortcuts. Let's go back to the shortcut section. Okay, so as we mentioned before, we will have a, we have templates already set up. So I'll click on the templates button here. Now, this templates screen will show you the current setup. So because we just set up that one particular shortcut, as you can see here, we've got that vMix shortcut that we set up before to that top left hand button. Now you can export this particular template, which is I strongly advise doing. So you can call it something, you can name it vMix template. And um, we can save that. So if we save, if we export it and we save it, that means that we've always got a copy of that template. If somebody comes along to our vMix production, changes all our shortcuts, then we have a copy of it. So it's always best practice to um, create a copy. Once you've already set up your buttons, as you can see, there's a lot of buttons here. So if you set all those up, go to the time of doing that, make sure that you export it. And then naturally you can import that particular file. So we have that here, we can import that and that will load up what we already, uh, what we saved previously. You can also save this graphic. So if we had all these buttons loaded up and all of the functions would be listed down here, we can save that graphic and then we can print that out possibly or pass that graphic along to the person that might be using this MIDI controller. Okay, now on the left-hand side here, we have pre-built templates. As you can see for the Akai ABC, we have all these different buttons doing all these different things. So if you wanted to use this one or maybe manipulate it already, um, you could click apply. And now this will ex replace all the shortcuts that we had before. So we'll go, yes. And now you can see this is our shortcut screen. All of those have been added. So that, that's a quick way to use it if you wanted to, if you liked most of the settings on that particular template, and then we can go in and we can edit them individually if you wanted to. So we'll go back to the template section. So now that's changed to our current template. We have other ones here for different MIDI devices, including the keyboard. So if you wanted to set up your a keyboard template, you could do it quickly here, um, just as an example, or you could add them all individually and then um, save them if you wanted to. Okay, so we'll close that down now and we'll cancel out of that. So that's how you set up your shortcuts in vMix. You can set them individually, you can use a template, you can clone them, um, you, can, you can add multiple shortcuts to the one button. So there's a whole different, different bunch of different things you can do with shortcuts in vMix. So just as um, I mentioned before, it's always good to export that template. So once you've created that, say for your keyboard or your MIDI device, you wanna export that just so that you've got a copy of it in case somebody wipes over your vMix production. Um, so it will, your shortcuts will be saved in your overall vMix production, but if somebody then goes and changes that, then um, you, you want a backup of that. All right, so that's how you use shortcuts in vMix. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. 
And don't forget to check out all our other vMix training videos.